Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at uh, one of my new favourite bayonets. Um, I only came across it for the first time a couple of months ago. I don't know how I'd missed it before, but it's definitely up there with uh, my favourites. And as soon as I uh, found one online, I got it as quick as I could. Anyway, this is the Portuguese model of 1885 bayonet. And um, I'll try to explain which rifle it was designed for and which one it was issued for. It's a bit of an interesting story. So originally it was designed for the uh, Steyr made Geeds rifle, which was a single shot black powder rifle, uh, similar to a Martini Henry with a falling block. It was uh, lever action or lever operated. Now, um, in the 1880s, uh, being a firearms designer or a firearms manufacturer in particular, was not a, uh, a good thing to do. By the time you make a rifle and uh, invest in all the tooling and set up production, the rifle that you are now prepared to manufacture is out of date and no one wants to buy because um, something else has come along. So in 1885, Steyr was uh, prepared to start manufacturing the Geeds. They had secured um, a contract with Portugal um, for about 40 or 50,000 rifles and bayonets. I'm not sure how many exactly. And uh, once they were about six to 10,000 uh, rifles into production, Portugal caught on that, hang on a second, you're selling us a single shot rifle and you're also making repeaters. And Germany and other countries have been using repeating rifles for a few years now. So they weren't satisfied with what they were receiving. They canceled the contract and they ordered the Krapatschik uh, rifle, the model of 1886 Krapatschik rifle, which was a repeating rifle. The Geeds rifles, um, they made a few more, I think in total, like 18 or 19,000, and they ended up selling them to the Boers in South Africa, where they were used in the Second Boer War against, uh, well, the British Empire. Uh, I don't know if those Geeds rifles also came with bayonets, uh, the same as this one, but I know that this style of bayonet was originally designed for the Geeds rifle and was then adapted to fit, well, not adapted, it then went with the um, model of 1886 Krapatschek rifle. So the Portuguese obviously ordered the Krapatschek. Um, total uh, order of 57,000. Uh, that was 56,000 made in 1886 to 89 and a further 1,000 in 1893 to 94. Uh, they came in four different configurations, all of which took the bayonet. So they had the, uh, the colonial version, the infantry version, they had the cavalry version, which was like a little carbine, and they had another little carbine, which I think might have been the artillery carbine, but um, don't quote me on that. I know it's too long and too short. Uh, all four had bayonet lugs, and from what I can tell, all four took bayonets. So I'm making the assumption that since 57,000 rifles were ordered, they also had 57,000 of these bayonets. Now, they saw a little bit of use. Uh, in the former Portuguese territories of Angola and Mozambique. And um, in World War II, a lot of the Portuguese Krapatschek rifles actually been uh, surplus through to East Timor and they saw some action against the Japanese. Um, I don't know if they had the bayonets with them in East Timor, but um, absolutely gorgeous bayonet. I'm very, very happy to have this one. Um, oh yeah, sorry, they're also used in uh, as late as 1961 in the former Portuguese Indian territories of uh, Goa, Damaya, and Dua, I think it is, so I can't pronounce them. So uh, when India, the Indian army invaded. Anyway, um, without any further ado, I'll pull it out. I'll have a look at it. I don't know if you heard that actually, but... Beautiful little ring, and that is the smoothest drawing bayonet I own. I've got a sizable collection. This is one of, if not the oldest bayonet I own, and that is the smoothest and nicest drawer I have. It is extremely well made. Made by Styr, I wouldn't expect anything less, but that uh, just speaks to the quality of it. Anyway, look at, at the construction. We've got a uh, Yadagan style blade, which is a sort of a double recurved uh, blade in shape. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, the purpose of Yadagan blades, um, if I haven't already, I'll make a video shortly about it. Got a nice, deep uh, fuller. So it's a square, square shaped fuller, both sides of the blade. And um, while not sharp, it feels like it was initially sharpened at factory, but very, very well made. Now, looking at the spine of the blade, 
we actually have the manufacturer's details there. So it's a little worn from going in and out of the scabbard, but it reads Steyr 1886. So obviously made by Steyr and 1886 is the year of manufacture. Uh, or the model, I'm not sure which. I'll assume the year of manufacture. Uh, nice big beefy cross guard with the muzzle ring. Nice little um, ball for nails on the end. Wooden handguard, this one's quite dark. It's absorbed a lot of oil over the years. I'm tempted to put it under the hairdryer to see if I can draw some of that dark gun oil out and um, bring back the original coloring a little bit. But because I can't remove the grips, so rivet it in, I'm hesitant to try. So I might just leave it as is. And a uh, nice uh, standard um, pommel, push button, nothing too interesting here. Is that a marking in there? I'm not sure if that's a deliberate marking, part of the manufacturing process or what that is. And uh, yeah, nothing on the base of the pommel there. Now I might go over the other markings. So we've got, there we go, a serial number just here on the cross guard. PP, what's that say, 972. Now I haven't figured out the serial number, uh, <laughs> how they were serialized. So if you know, let me know in the comment section below. I know it's probably not the same with the Mauser where they count to 10,000 and then increment up a letter, but um, maybe PP is a code, I don't know. I'll have to do some more digging, maybe chuck it in the description. And on the reverse here, you'll see we have this same mark on both the cross guard and the Ricasso. Now I've done extensive research on this particular marking and I've come up with absolutely nothing. So I've spoken to a bunch of experts and I've had one expert tell me it is a um, a mark for Steyr, so for individual pieces that were built by Steyr, uh, it was marked with that and you find that on the rifle as well, on the barrel bands, uh, on the bolt, on the bolt handle, on a lot of the smaller metal pieces. And um, I find that quite credible because if it's going to be a manufacturer's mark, it's not unheard of to have a manufacturer's mark on all of the metal pieces made in a particular factory or by a particular manufacturer. That makes a lot of sense. The other, um, <laughs> the other thing I've heard, this is from a pretty serious collector, is he said it's actually the Portuguese cross, uh, as you find on their helmets and other equipment. Now, yeah, it does have a cross in the middle and the Portuguese cross does splay out at each end. I'm hesitant to believe that this is a Portuguese cross. And if it is, a Portuguese cross is like the, um, the government acceptance marks you find um, on uh, British and Commonwealth equipment. Now, I'm hesitant to believe they would put a Portuguese cross or government acceptance mark on every barrel band on the rifle. That just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. In my mind, if it's a government acceptance mark, you'll find one on the rifle, one on the bayonet, not one on each metallic piece. So I'm going to stick with their manufacturer's markings at this point, but um, I'm not certain. And uh, if I get a more definite answer, I'll up update the description below. Or better yet, if you know, comment below and uh, enlighten me. Anyway, I find that to be quite a little interesting uh, market. I've done, as I said, a lot of research into it. I have, I got my hands on a bunch of Steyr rifles uh, made at the same time. They don't have that mark. I got a, my hands on a bunch of Portuguese rifles from before and after. They don't have that mark either. Um, I couldn't get my hands on a Geeds rifle, but I got a really close look at a couple of photos and saw there are markings on the barrel bands of the Geeds in very similar spots. So I'm assuming the initial Geeds rifles that were made for Portugal that weren't accepted probably had that same mark, but I can't make it out and I can't be certain. But as far as I can tell, it's not on any other Steyr or Austrian rifles uh, or bayonets or any other Portuguese rifles or bayonets. So it seems to be unique to the uh, this particular bayonet, the Kropatschek rifle, and possibly the Geeds. As I said, I can't tell. Now, looking at the scabbard, it's a nice uh, yet again style or shaped scabbard to accommodate the bayonet, of course. Nice ball finale on the tip here, completely unmarked. We do have a small dent. I don't think I'm gonna get my hands on a mandrel to get that out anytime soon. Um, nice Portuguese uh, 
frog stud and you'll notice if i can get you to focus please an oewg mark just here on the frog stud oewg was sort of like a, a workshop or a subsidiary a, a company or a different name for style so oewg is interchangeable with style uh, other than that i don't believe there's any markings no there's not as you can see, it's a omnidirectional scabbard, so the blade will only go in the one way with the spine topmost. And that is really all there is to say about this bayonet. I don't know a terrible lot more, but I really, really like it. And um, it's going to sit at the top of my collection because um, it's an absolutely stunning piece. Anyway, guys, if you know anything else about this, uh, feel free to comment below. I would love to hear from you. Um, I've really struggled with sources for this video just because I haven't been able to find a terrible lot. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.